Hello everyone, my name is Jared Ainsworth and in this video I would like to highlight some of the features of my Falcon 9 slash Falcon Heavy rocket model as well as record the entire build of the Falcon Heavy. Uh, so lots and lots of credit has to go to Kim Teacher 628 on Thingiverse. Um, this started out as just kind of a minor remix of his rocket. Um, but once I started playing with it, I just couldn't stop. <laughs> uh, so here's some of the parts that I printed out from his. Um, on his rocket, I didn't finish obviously, there's some extenders missing here. Um, for the configurable interchangeable parts, uh, he had this little uh, hook latch system. Uh, so you could stick it in there and latch it and twist it. And it would hold together pretty well, you know, a little bit of scotch tape on the uh, fairing and you know, stand the rocket up and it would display uh, great. It, it's a really nice little system. Uh, but I wanted something a little more rugged, uh, something more robust. Uh, so initially when I started this, all I was going to do is replace the hook systems with a threaded system. Uh, and that was going to be it. But I found once I started working on the model, I just couldn't stop. I just, I just kept refining and refining and playing with it and tweaking it. So uh, I'm trying to stop now. <laughs> Hopefully uh, you guys all like what I have here. Um, so yeah, that was the main thing I wanted to do first. Uh, so all the configurable parts here, these are all threaded now. Uh, so the top of the booster to the second stage interchange has threads, and then the interchange to second stage has threads, and the fairing also has threads. So this is all threaded together. Uh, and it's really very robust. I mean, once these guys are screwed together, uh, everything's a double helix thread, so it doesn't line up. Just back it out and redo it, and they should line up. Uh, it's really strong. Uh, I gave a shortened down version kind of like this, uh, the threaded part uh, with the landing legs and everything to my three-year-old son. He played with it for a couple weeks, uh, short of breaking off some of the rocket engines. Um, it was in great shape, just dinged up and scratched and stuff, so uh, I was pretty happy about that. Um, other tweaks that I made uh, after I did that, um, I kind of started shooting for 100% support-free 3D printing, so 3D printing with no supports at all. Um, that involved uh, tweaking the, the engine uh, connector point a little bit. Uh, mine actually uses the same four connector points that I'm using uh, to go between the booster sections that glue together. So the engines and the whole lower booster section all still glues together, uh, just like Chem Teacher 628's version did. Um, yeah, so the connecting pins that go to the heavy, uh, these are kind of diamond shaped now instead of round, uh, so they're good for 3D printing. Um, I did, I liked what he did with his leg, but it wasn't working out that well for me when I tried to print it. Uh, this is his leg uh, with the actuators actually print in place. So, it, you know, it prints standing up on its tip like this. Um, and the whole thing just comes out of the printer in one piece, uh, which I liked. It was cool, but it didn't really uh, work out that well for me. It was too thin right here and the tip was too thin. It kept breaking off. Uh, in his version, this tip has that little pin uh, that it goes into to kind of hold the leg in place and uh, that just it wasn't really coming out of mine very well so i ditched the pin i ditched the hinge pins here ditched the hinge pins here kind of went to um, a little i'm not even sure exactly how you describe the kind of joint but basically the legs are kind of a wishbone shape and they just they just have little uh little knobs on them that just snap into a couple of little uh cavities and then for the actuators as well as for the grid fins uh, so inside the cavity, there's just little bumps that kind of work as a short hinge pin. And then I've got bumps in my actual actuator, so those guys just snap together. And then you get a nice little joint. And it's, it's pretty stiff and stays in place really well. I've had good luck with it so far. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I went to four alignment pegs instead of three. Uh, mine are very snug, so if your printer is not printing real close to accurate tolerances, then uh, you might have to do some sanding or cutting, but on mine, it comes right off the printer and it still goes together with no modification, a little bit of glue, and that sucker's gonna be solid. Uh, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I changed, I got rid of the hinge pins all together down here, um, not just to make this 3D printable, but also because I needed the legs to get in a little bit closer. I wanted to I wanted to bring the, the boosters and the, the center section closer together. Uh, like they are in the actual Falcon Heavy, so I had to get rid of the hinge pin because there just there wasn't enough material here at these joints to actually get that together. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, again, lots of teacher to lots of credit to Kim Teacher 628. Um, it's all pretty much based off of his his uh, design measurements and everything, which uh, his was supposed to be close to HO scale, uh, so this should still be HO scale. Uh, I'm assuming mine's going to work uh, with his strong arm kit, but I haven't printed that out to try it yet. Uh, I'll do that after I uh, finish assembling this heavy. Uh, so this is one of my nose cones. Uh, I, this actually has a, a little all thread that prints out separately. 
Uh, so this goes on the end of the booster for one of the Falcon Heavy boosters. You get rid of the second stage and instead of screwing on the inner stage, you screw your all thread. And that just changes your Falcon 9 into a Falcon Heavy return booster. <laughs> uh, so the grid fins on mine, uh, I made them print in place. I got rid of the pin that goes into the airframe uh, like Kim Teacher had on his. Uh, what that means is mine only go in and out. They don't rotate like his do, uh, but they're a little more conducive to 3D printing, and I, I think they came out looking a little a little closer to the real thing. So I like them. I'm happy with them. Uh, even though they don't rotate, uh, maybe one day I'll, I'll add some kind of crazy pin in there to make it rotate like his did, but uh, I like it the way it is. So I'm just going to run with this for now. Um, here's some of my stuff that printed. Uh, these are some black landing legs with grid fins. Uh, as you can see, everything it's still on the raft that it came off of on the printer and uh, just no supports anywhere, the whole thing. Pretty not great, no supports. And I mean, really the legs are the trickiest part, but uh, everything else is pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this thing together. I'm gonna do the whole thing with a little bit of super glue. I'm gonna start with my heavy center. All right, and there you have it. So that is my Falcon Heavy, and this sucker is real tough. I mean, the engines might break off easy, but uh, and the actuator arms might be a little fragile. Otherwise, uh, this sucker is a toy that you know a reasonably sized kid could probably play with. Um, this is my returned section. I did the landing legs and actuators and everything black on this. I would have done the actuators black on this, but you can see them sticking out on the bottom, so I wanted them to be white, so from a distance it looks more authentic. Um, I also forgot to do the nose cone for this one, so I guess I'll have to do that later. I'll probably redo these grid fins in silver since the the real new version is titanium, and that's what was actually flown on the first one, the first heavy. Uh, I also need to do the connecting uh, plumbing and electrical, uh, the little piece that goes across there. I forgot to do that guy, so I'll knock that out as well. But anyway, um, I spent way more time on this thing than I should have, so I hope some other people can get some enjoyment out of it. I had a lot of fun working on it and putting it together. And uh, again, lots of thanks to Chem Teacher 628. Uh, great little design that he had. Uh, had a lot of fun modifying it. So enjoy.
All right, and there you have it. So that is my Falcon Heavy. And this sucker is real tough. I mean, the engines might break off easy, but uh, and the actuator arms might be a little fragile. Otherwise, uh, this sucker is a toy that, you know, a reasonably sized kid could probably play with. Um, this is my returned section. I did the landing legs and actuators and everything black on this. I would have done the actuators black on this, but you can see them sticking out on the bottom, so I wanted them to be white, so from a distance it looks more authentic. Um, I also forgot to do the nose cone for this one, so I guess I'll have to do that later. I'll probably redo these grid fins in silver since the the real new version is titanium, and that's what was actually flown on the first one, the first heavy. Uh, I also need to do the connecting uh, plumbing and electrical, uh, the little piece that goes across there. I forgot to do that guy, so I'll knock that out as well. But anyway, um, I spent way more time on this thing than I should have, so I hope some other people can get some enjoyment out of it. I had a lot of fun working on it and putting it together. And uh, again, lots of thanks to Chem Teacher 628. Uh, great little design that he had. Uh, had a lot of fun modifying it. So enjoy.